Welcome back to the Investing with IBD podcast. We've got a special episode for you uh, on coming to you on a Tuesday. We've got John Nigerian as our guest. He is, of course, the co-founder of Market Rebellion. And, you know, of course, you can get to some of the information that he's sharing with folks at marketrebellion.com. Uh, also, uh, go ahead, John, why don't you give people your Twitter handle? Because you give a lot of great analysis on Twitter. There's mm. a, a lot of wealth of information that you're giving there. So go ahead well, and give that to folks as well. You're too kind, Justin. Um, it's just my first name, John, J-O-N. My dad mm -hmm. was with an H. I'm not. Okay. Um, last name Nigerian, N-A-J-A-R-I-A-N. There are Perfect. no M's in there. There's no M's, <laughs> only M's. Yes. M's as in Nancy. By the way. M's as in Nancy, November, M. you know, take your pick, right? That's right. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we have Arusha Paris with us as well, uh, O'Neill Global Advisors Portfolio Manager. So um, the, the topic we were going to talk about uh, today, and again, this is, this is kind of a newer thing, right? Uh, the, the zero days till expiration products. Um, so mm -hmm. John, can you give us a little bit of a, a primer on what these are and why we need to be aware of them? Sure. Well, um, you guys know, and I, 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 Arusha and I have talked a number of times about how fast time decay accelerates. Yeah. Yep. Going, It's like going into a black hole. Um, would be the best way. You know how once you pass the event horizon, Arusha, it just yes. disappears? <laughs> exactly. That's what it's like, folks, because the longer dated options decay like this, it's almost mm -hmm. imperceptible. But in the mm -hmm. final two months, or in particular, the final 30 days, that option starts decaying at a very rapid pace. And so uh, the popularity of these options, the zero time till expiration sort of situation is that A, um, they're much cheaper or so they appear. Right. <laughs> I mean, but if you wanted to own a month's worth of those using that same little, seems little input of, for instance, 40 cents, but you multiplied it times 30 days, you'd say, wow, I wouldn't have paid $12 for that at the money option. It's only worth six or whatever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But it has to price in all of that binary outcome that might be something or nothing like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, the CBOE, when they do that VIX calculation, um, they're, they, they have smoothed it over time to drop the nearest dated options from the S&P 500, the main thing that they track, because mm -hmm. that's what the VIX is. There are other measures of vol but the VIX is tracking the S&P 500. So mm -hmm. what they do is um, they take a sample of the front week. It used to be front month, now front week. And they start dropping off as it gets down to two days, one day. They drop the calculation because otherwise the vol looks like it's sky high, um, mm -hmm. not low, high. <laughs> um, and so that's what, uh, uh, to, to smooth it, um, they basically drop those days that are closest to expiration and push the calculation drawing from um, longer dated options, not right. leaps and things like that, but options that are out there two weeks, three weeks, four weeks into the future. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're sitting at home and you're trading uh, short or zero, you know, zero time till expiration options, you're not really trading a VIX of 20 or 21. You're mm -hmm. probably over 30 in that VIX. Um, mm -hmm. And that presents a lot of problems with time decay, obviously, because you don't have much time. Mm -hmm. So so there's a lot to unpack here. So, you know, first of all, I guess maybe we start since you brought it up, the VIX. Um, and of course, in MarketSmith, uh, we look at zero VIX is the, the symbol that we use for this. And the way a lot of people use this, as, as you mentioned, this is the implied volatility of the S&P 500. So, you know, when it's high, the expectation is that over the next 30 days, that the S&P 500 is going to have a bigger move. And when it's low, it's expected that it's going to have a lower move. Um, and now it doesn't tell you direction, of course. It's just that a move is is, is going to happen. Now, a lot of people yeah. use this to kind of get a market sentiment. And, you know, when it gets mm -hmm. really crazy high, a lot of people think of that as a bottoming signal. 
And when it gets really crazy low, they kind of think of it as complacency and, and a problem. So with, with that kind of backdrop, the zero DTEs, you know, if you're saying that, you know, people are thinking that we're really complacent because we've been below 20 or around 20, but we're really at 30, like, does this, does this all of a sudden become like a psychological market indicator that you can't use anymore? Um, it does. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be the first to say it. Well, maybe mm -hmm. not the first, but one of the first. The well, first on this show, John. Yeah, yeah sure. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you credit there. Uh, okay. And really, um, this is all that's matter, that matters, right? You know. So. Well, yeah, because um, you know, people are trading off of something that's not real. Yeah. Um, if they're looking at that. Um, mm -hmm. And I imagine that there are hedge funds, especially Renaissance Capital and a bunch of these really smart techies over at uh, Citadel that have figured this out, that mm -hmm. people are being fooled into thinking. And th the intent, I'm not saying that it was anyone's intent, not the yeah. guys at Duke who basically helped come up, you know, Gast Gary Gastineau and a bunch of these guys that helped uh, create the VIX. Um, but what they did was they said, well, it's the VIX is too volatile if we count the short dated options. So that's why, like we said, they push it out further into the future. Mm -hmm. I think the, in all likelihood, we'll see a significant change in the tracking of the VIX. Mm -hmm. And if they have one just for the zero DTE, which they could easily do, um, it will be significantly higher and give you a completely different read on what investors are thinking, but it's only for that zero. It's only for that very short term. So right. for a lot of investors, they're not the Buffett investors because Warren Buffett could care less about DTE options. He cares about you know options because he's a big option trader. Yeah. The Oracle is. He cares about options that are out there three months, six months, a year into the future, not the zero DTE. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, w one thing that I've heard about the complaints with the, the zero T DTE options is that it, they're, they're kind of masking just some, some of the vol not just the volatility, but other behaviors in the S&P 500, where maybe at a certain strike price, people are just loading up and having absurd amount of contracts. H have you heard anything about that? Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I, I believe just as Arusha said, Justin, that you do have a lot of people that do load up for a whole host of reasons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some of it could be related, could be to market manipulation. Some of it could be that uh, um, they have exposure further out on the uh, calendar and instead of uh, making a, a, a big mistake, buying back that exposure that they took on by selling options or whatever, they buy something very short term on days when they're worried about it. And mm -hmm. then probably try to trade out of that and leave that longer dated stuff to just you know, shrink as far as you know, for people that are premium sellers and things mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. I think it could be used for manipulation um, because the bigger you are, buying 20,000, 50,000, and I see that all the time, uh, those kinds of size in the S&P 500, the SPY, in the IWM, in the QQQ, um, mm -hmm. I see that a lot on our system. And I think sometimes it's a hedge, and other times it's perhaps trying to push the market, you know, like the Joker in uh, uh, Batman, when he says, sometimes it just needs a little push. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is this something that um, people just need to be aware of because it's out there and it's, it's, it's a factor in how the market is playing out and you know the VIX and all these things? Or is, is this something that people should be trading themselves? Uh, you mentioned this is a very binary trade. It's either gonna it's either gonna work or it's not, and you don't have you don't have time to like adjust your trade or anything like that. So is this is this something people should be trading themselves or kind of stay away? Well, and I hope nobody uh, that's watching takes offense to this, but this is really deep end of the pool stuff. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. This is like 
you know, you're in uh, advanced trigonometry or whatever, or mm -hmm. um, string theory, if you're a physicist, mm -hmm. um, because not because it's not understandable, but because if you're not aware of how badly that time decay can work against you, right? You should not be in these options. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we we already know weekly options, I believe, are over fifty four percent of the volume that trades right now. Amazing that's in the incredible. markets. Now that's not uh -huh. zero DTE. That's five days. Mm -hmm. You know, five uh -huh. DTE or tomorrow morning. Um, yeah. It would be four DTE and so forth. So and and everyone was thinking that was crazy, right? When those were coming out, yep. it's yeah. like that was way too short term. Mm -hmm. Right. I remember, you know, because I'm so old, Arusha, <laughs> I remember I started trading in 1981. And uh, back then, we Options only were new. Had, <laughs> yep, we only had quarterly expirations. Wow. And, wow. and only about 20 or 30 percent of uh, stocks had puts. Mm -hmm. They didn't all have yeah. puts even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we have puts and calls, same strike, of course. Uh, for nearly every stock, an awful lot of them have weekly expirations. Um, mm -hmm. and, and as you move into that territory, you've changed the game. Yep. Yeah. And it made things more affordable for speculators. And mm -hmm. it also made things more difficult for all but some of the smartest people out there that are uh, in, uh, in most cases, I would think, feasting on the people that are because every time there's something new there's somebody who doesn't understand it yeah. and those are the people that get carved up just like they yeah. say at the poker table if you don't mm -hmm. know who the chump is it's yeah. you <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you know and i mean to your point i mean if you just look at a uh, a graphic showing the volume you know from when you started in 81 to the volume in options trading now i mean it's it, it looks like an exponential you know, a curve. Uh, it, it's just yep. massive the amount of volume that has changed there. Right. So when I started, mm -hmm. it was three or four hundred thousand contracts a day between right. the four options exchanges: Pacific, mm -hmm. Philly, Chicago, Amex. Four hundred thousand total contracts. Now, this year, twenty twenty three, we've seen seventy two million. I believe was mm -hmm. the record, oh and goodness. that was set this year. We're averaging. 47 million a day. So yeah. to Justin's point, plot that out, folks. 1981, <laughs> 400,000. Today, yeah. 70 million is the high and 47 million is the average. Mm -hmm. That's crazy yeah. volume. Yeah. And, and, and what you were saying before is, you know, sometimes you have these, um, these calculations, I, like the VIX index, um, you know, which again, for the time it, it had you know, it had everything it needed. And, and, and I mean, even that, that calculation changed. There was for a while, the old VIX calculation was what was on the S&P 100. Um, yep. It was on and, the OEX. Yes. And the so then they switched it to the S&P 500. Um, so, you know, they adapted it and, you know, now you've got something, you know, a new product. And as you said, sometimes there's these unintended consequences uh, from these products. So, so John, to kind of just wrap this up, What's, you know, zero DTE, I mean, that's that's one of the latest products. What what do you think is coming up in the future and, and what can we expect from that? Well, I'd say the first thing will probably be zero DTE options for equities, for Apple, mm -hmm. for Tesla, um, for Microsoft, ones, yeah. for Google. Um, and what will that mean? Quote traffic like you have never seen. <laughs> because mm -hmm. right. each time they do this, when you go from weeklies or when you go from monthlies to weeklies, now you've created a lot more stress. You've created a lot more data to get through a pipe, uh -huh. that unless you made the pipe a lot bigger, you can only get so much data through that pipe. So it starts mm -hmm. backing up and all of a sudden the data's back here. You think you're seeing live quotes and you're really not. Uh huh. And so does that, wh wh where does that leave people in terms of, uh, for those that are kind of behind, you know, how much of an edge do they lose and how much of an edge do those high frequency traders get? Um, the high frequency traders definitely get an edge, but mm -hmm. Joe and Jane aren't really hurt that much because they're mm -hmm. not trading millisecond by millisecond. Right. Arusha's mm -hmm. sending in an order from the portfolio that he manages and 
he's not going to flip out of that in two milliseconds. Yeah. He's going to be in it for two days or two weeks or two months. So mm -hmm. you are being taken advantage of, but it's not a time frame that any of the normal trading mm -hmm. community can take advantage of. Yeah, that's it's, yeah, it's, it's picking up the pennies, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I almost a bulldozer. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, I almost said like even when high frequency trading was what uh, came out and, and was pretty new, it almost made like the weekly charts and monthly charts that much more important because it became much harder to compete and do well in the shorter, shorter time frames. But mm -hmm. as you go longer out and, and John, as you were talking about with Warren Buffett, it's not going to really make that much of a difference there if you're looking for kind of that true institutional accumulation and going for those quality type of companies. Yep, I agree. Mm -hmm. Well yeah. said. Very good. Well, hey, thanks for this uh, introduction and also just kind of the uh, the impact, the unintended consequences, all of those things that these zero DTEs are having on uh, on the marketplace. So thanks for these uh, this this quick lesson. And Thank when you. we come back, we're going to see what are some of the stocks that are on John's radar and how he's handling them. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you want to watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.